God told me to tell you this. He gave me a vision. We believe you got born again. Seed sown is harvest grown. Judge not, lest ye be judged. Yes, I know. In our last video of pithy Christian slogans, I mispronounced C L I C H E. Whoop. Ah, Christian glitches. For the record, it was a joke. I know that it's pronounced Kleitches. Duh. Do you think I'm D U M M stupid? Don't answer that. With that being said, let's tackle 10 more Christian Kleitches. Then you left us in the comments at the last video. Encourage you to do likewise with this video. Number uh, 10. Mm, how many times do we hear this? Do not judge or you too will be judged. Yeah. That is something that Jesus actually said, but Jesus was not forbidding all judging, as liberals suggest. Strike one, the statement is a judgment statement. <laughs> Strike two, we see Jesus making judgments all the time. Strike three, we couldn't even order at Zaxby's, and that would be a shame, if we weren't allowed to judge between a chicken sandwich and the chicken fingers. Strike four, don't ask me what kind of game we're playing here in John chapter 7. Jesus tells us to judge with righteous judgment. Stop judging by external standards and judge by true standards. So what exactly was Jesus saying? The same thing he said on the Sermon on the Mount. Don't judge with a log in your eye. Or to paraphrase in the vernacular of the peasantry, don't be a judgmental jerk. Number nine, God told me, Fill in the blank, or it's ugly stepsisters. I heard God say, or God told me, first of all, you need to know. Hold on. Yeah, okay, so God just told me that he's not talking to you. <laughs> first, if we believe the word of God is sufficient for all of life and godliness, then we don't need any more divine information communicated directly to us. Second, please note, in the Old Testament, very few people heard from God. And you have to ask, is God really speaking private messages difficult to interpret to over a billion people today? Third, if you argue that we only heed words from God that are in alignment with Scripture, then we don't need those fresh new words because we've already got them in the Bible, as Justin Peters likes to say, and we like to play. If you want to hear God speak to you, there's one way. I guarantee you, you will hear God speak to you. Read your Bible. Number eight, sow a seed. Ladies and gentlemen, your harvest is coming. Why? Because you sowed. Are you believing for it? Or you, or you throw in seed instead of sowing seed. You gots to admit, it's a bit suspicious when all of these prosperity preachers tell you to sow a seed for your prosperity by sowing a seed into their ministry. Only works if you give to the guy on TV. When it comes to giving, God doesn't operate on a quid pro quo basis. We are to give from the heart with no guarantee that God's going to act like a cosmic vending machine and return a bunch of cash to us. But speaking of money, number seven, money is the root of all evil, two big problemos. One, it actually misquotes <laughs> the verse that this is taken from. It actually says the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, not all evil. Second, money isn't the root of all evil. There's lots of roots. Pride can be a root. Unbelief, fear of man, lust, it can all be a root that leads to the fruit of sin. We could continue, but let's get to number six, the sinner's prayer. If you prayed that simple prayer, we believe you got born again. Think of the sinner's prayer like the story of a man who committed adultery against his wife, didn't feel very bad, but a buddy persuaded him, you got to go back to the missus and don't worry about what you're going to say because I'll lead you through this. It might look a little something like this. Hey. You have been unfaithful to our vows. You deserve to be separated from me 
forever? Um, I guess I could say that, uh... Say, honey! Honey? No, say, honey! Really mean it. Honey! I ask you into my heart. I ask you into my heart. What does that even mean? Uh, I make you my wife and partner. I make you my wife and partner. But I'm already your wife. Mm. Uh, this one works every time. I accept you. I accept you. You gotta be kidding me. And you too. That would be kind of dopey, wouldn't it? Number five, do you have a piece about your decision? Number one, wicked people have peace when they make evil decisions. Problem two, peace is a feeling. And we all know what feelings are. They're nothing more than feelings. Now, to be clear, there are times we should listen to the voice of hesitation in our heads, but that is not God giving you a hint. It's likely just your brain warning you, you haven't really thought this through very well. Number four, cleanliness. It's next to godliness. Unfortunately, that statement just isn't found in the Bible. It might have come from the pen of Mr. Methodist John Wesley, and we can note in the OT, if you didn't unhitch it, Ritual washings, cleanliness, it was a part of ancient Israel's worship of Jehovah. But while cleanliness was a part of worshiping the Lord, it just isn't right to say that cleanliness is adjacent to godliness. Besides, if cleanliness is next to godliness, uh, chances are real good. John the Baptist wasn't very godly. Number three, just listen to the still, still small, small voice. voice. Ooh, has misled many into thinking they need to sit for hours praying quietly until they hear audibly a still, small, gentle voice of God in their nog. And doesn't it seem suspicious that we need entire books dedicated to helping us interpret what God is softly whispering in our ears? And isn't it even more suspicious that these books warn you that you could be hearing the whispers of Satan? Number two, let go and let God. Ah, Keswick theology to the core. You could call it Bobby McFerrin theology. Don't worry, be happy. And if that reference is too current for you, call it Doris Day theology. Que sera, sera. We aren't supposed to que sera, sera life. Sanctification. Decision-making and godly living, it isn't passive, it's active because sanctification isn't monergistic, it's synergistic. And if you aren't familiar with them, their terms, encourage you to get a copy of Drive-By Theology. Yes, that was a blatant plug. And uh, finally, the number one Christian Kleitchi. Hey, at least I stick to my guns. Have you heard Christianity is a relationship, not a religion? What you need is not a religion. What you need is a relationship. Now I get that, the possible good intention that this unbiblical statement is trying to make. Christianity, it's not about religiosity. It's about a close personal relationship with Jesus Christ, a klitschy, no, it's a klitschy, a klitschy, I can't keep my jokes straight, that I actually affirm Christianity isn't about formality and doing bibbity bobbity boo ceremonies. It is about knowing the true and living God that we have been introduced via the doctrine of justification accomplished by Jesus Christ so that we can know the Father and be in a relationship with the Father. We have to be, you know, Honest, Christianity has all the hallmarks of religion, organization, membership, clergy, ceremonies, worship, hierarchy. Yes, religion can be cultish. It can be oppressive. It can be formulaic. But make no mistake about it, Christianity is a religion. You got more of them there, Christian Kleitches? We want to hear about them. Now, please... Go join a solid Bible-believing church. 
Oftentimes, this stick can bring joy or it can bring fear, worry, and a very bad decision to abort one's child. Preborn.org, providing free ultrasounds that lead to the right decision 80% of the time. How much joy would you like to bring to a woman? How many babies' lives would you like to save? Please visit preborn.org slash wretched. If you love to buy one and get one free, and frankly, who of us doesn't? You'll love our year-end match-giving campaign. Every dollar you give is matched by a very generous gospel partner. Would you please consider becoming a gospel partner right now? 